There, that's better. What's up everybody and welcome back. It's been a week, not three weeks, and it's time for a new video. So today I don't really have so much going on. As you can see, I have Julian's cars in here. I have Mike's car in here and I have mine, but other customer cars right now um, aren't here. They're probably gonna come here later this week. So today I'm taking the opportunity to change the brakes out on Mike's car. If you guys saw his last video um, with the Tahoe video, you know that the brake line went out and that it was pretty sketch. It was squirting oil or uh, squirting brake fluid pretty bad um, just as he touched the brakes. So we need to handle that. I fixed it temporarily so he could drive this car, but it needs the proper stuff. And thanks to ISR, he has the brake lines. He's got, um, I don't know what kind of rotors these are. They're like stop tech rotors. I think they're slotted drilled rotors, but he's got the good stuff, the EBC brakes. And so we're gonna put those on today. You guys have seen how he's driving. And now, it's time to change it so he can stop better. So let's get to it. Okay, now you guys have seen me move this car over here. You've seen me rack cars a hundred times. So the only thing I did want to show you, a lot of people ask like, when the cars are so low, how do you get them on the racks? How do you do stuff like that? On 350Zs, there is a tow hook on the driver's side under here that I use to jack it up as high as I can. And as I do that, then the rack is able to slide under to the pinch welds um, where you're supposed to lift the car from and I can get it up that way. So just jack it up as high as I can, slide the arms under and yeah, then lift it. So I just wanted to point that out for you because I have had that question before. So now you can see that this will rotate underneath just like that. So it's up in the air now. I wanted to give you guys a look at the wheels on Mike's car. They're huge. 13 inch wide meats back here. Not something you guys get to see every day is underneath the car. So I figured I would give you a little bit under, there's his cutout. And then you can see how this is pretty much put together here. ISR, clean. Still looking clean. Okay, so now that the wheel's off, you can kind of see the rotor. One thing to look for on rotors is a glazing. If I kind of hit it at an angle, you can see it's pretty shiny. It's glazed from a bunch of heat. And if you look at it up close, you can see that there's little dots. The heat spots have now um, penetrated through the metal and makes it weak. Also, usually has them warped. So um, when you hit the brakes, you'll probably feel a vibration in the brakes. Um, with the Brembo setup, you can see it's a little bit different than a traditional pad style where you take the bolt off the bottom, you can rotate it up, and then you squeeze the cup together. On these, since there's uh, pistons on either side, one of the easy things to do is you take off these two clips and then you'll slide the pins out. And I use a pry bar to pry in between the rotor and, and the pad on both sides to spread the cups back out. I use the pads themselves and you're not going to damage anything because you're getting new pads and the rotors, if you mark them up, you either have to um, resurface them or in this case, we're going to be replacing them. So that's an easy way to do these calipers. Um, and then there is the bolts in here. I believe they're 21s. I'm not too sure what size it is, 21 or 22. And then the whole caliper will come off and you can change the rotor. So I'm going to do that now and then I will show you the um, finished product. So one thing I do too is I use a pocket screwdriver to put through the clip. I don't know if you can see it. You can see I put it through the clip like this and then I kind of pull up. So that way when you pull it out, you don't shoot it somewhere and lose it on a dirty ground and then you can't find it anymore. So then I'll just let it slide there. 
I'll do the same with the next one, put it through, hold up on it, and pull up, and then you can see where the hole's at in there. That holds the slide pin in. And then put that down. And then you should be able to, I can use the same thing and push. So that way the pin come, starts to come out and I can do it on both of them. And as you do that, this will want to like tang up because it's actually under pressure. It's putting uh, pressure on the pads so that way they don't vibrate as you brake. So I'm gonna pull this off now. Okay, and so the pins are out, this is off, and it leaves it exposed to just the pads. So now I'll put the pry bar in each side and I will spread it open so that way the pistons compress and I'll be able to take the uh, caliper off evenly. If you try and do one side and take the pad out and do the other, because it's a hydraulic system, you're going to actually have the pressure push on the ones that you just spread and it'll push them out. You'll have to do this all over again. So that's why I use two of them to spread evenly. And you can now take the pads out. Pretty worn, Mike. You can see the grooves in it. These pads are shot. But now you can see the pistons are pushed all the way against each side and that leaves room for the new pads. So now I can take these off to remove this out of the way and get the rotor off. It's already loose too, so that's good. Sometimes you have to use a screw in here and it pushes against the knuckle and it'll actually break it free. Um, or if not, I usually hit it with a hammer and it'll kind of pop it off, so. Okay, a couple things I thought about real quick. Um, these are 22s the bolts for the Brembo's on the 350Z. I can't say that's across the board for all Brembo brakes, but on the 350Z Brembo, it's a 22 nut on that side. Um, another thing that I thought about is you can see that there's a metal line here. I know we're changing to the ISR lines, but you still have to be careful with that because the line actually goes to here. Um, and it replaces some of the other stuff, but I'll explain that later. So make sure you be careful of the metal line when you go to take this off to replace the rotor. Um, and that leaves me with the rotor. If you are doing drilled slotted rotors, you can see that they go at a certain angle. Um, so be very careful on which way um, or which rotor you use for which side. They are directional. Okay, so the rotor's off. I've been taking my time trying to clean up everything the best that I can. There is like some paint chips and stuff missing that I'm not gonna be able to clean up, but I have it all apart, so I might as well clean it. Um, I've been using some brake clean. Sorry, I got all like distracted for a second um, to clean it all up. And I've used uh, some of this optimized stuff and it pretty much is to clean like valves and gunk and stuff, but it works really well on brakes. So. Got this all cleaned up. The last thing I wanted to tell you, when you buy new rotors, there is this like sticky, nasty something that they leave on there to protect it from being rusted while it's in transit. So make sure you use brake clean and clean it off. On each side. You can kind of see it kind of like getting all gunked up. Okay, now I got the rotor in and I just set the pads in. Make sure you pay attention to the direction of the pads um, and how they sit against the rotor. It's sad I even have to say that, but you don't know how many brakes I've had to fix because they had the pad in wrong or they didn't pay attention to where the tab is, um, the low tab indicator. Um, yeah, people will do some strange stuff with brakes. Anyway, um, they're sitting in there now. I'm pretty much gonna go ahead and put it back together kind of show you with this the pin will go from the right side and it'll come all the way through and when the pad comes or when the pin comes through it pretty much just presses you might have to give it a little help going through so that way the hole sits in between the pad and here so you can put the clip back in but they will go in there this will sit in here putting pressure down on that and then i'll push this down put the pin through put that on and we have one side done um, I'm gonna go ahead and finish putting this together and then I'm gonna do the other side I wanted to explain in detail how this one goes and then I will show you on the rear how that goes and then we will get to the brake lines so 
Okay, and there it is. So you can see the pins go through. The uh, pressure tab is sitting down. These are going over top of it. And in between the pad and the caliper itself, you can see the safety pins so that way these don't back out this way. So aside from pumping the brakes um, and getting it where this will hold straight, it's all done. Okay, now I opened up the brake lines and I wasn't quite sure the orientation. So as you can see, it's already installed. I can show you the orientation. It goes off of the caliper there and then kind of just makes one long continuous loop onto the strut and then down to the factory hard line. So Nissan from the factory has all these weird like little blocks that is this is attached somewhere, this one's attached somewhere to the hard line and it makes it so that way they can kind of loop, break, loop, break. Um, but it's just unnecessary. The one line, how ISR has it, is much easier, um, works the same, and is just a cleaner setup. So I have those in. So this side is essentially done. The brakes are done, the lines are done. I can throw the tire on and get to the other side. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to show you kind of how it looks with the line installed as well. Okay, so we're moving on to the back brakes. I already took the wheel off. Um, you can see it's pretty much the same thing. It's a Brembo. We are not able to articulate the wheel out to be able to get a pry bar in there very easy. So I just do it from under here and do the same thing and spread it. There is, however, one difference because the rear brakes also incorporate shoes inside here for the e-brake. Um, there's this little window and this little window in here, if you spin it, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. I'll try my best, but there is a little dial in there. Nope camera's not really picking it up um, there's a dial in there that you will spin backwards and it will as you spin it backwards then the shoes move away and loosen up from here so you're able to get the rotor off sometimes you're able to just get away with pulling this off and kind of sliding this off depending on how much your e-brake already needs adjustment but um, if not this is what that window is for as you can see, there isn't a little plug on here. Sometimes there's a rubber plug. This one's missing it. But um, anyway, after I adjust that, then I will pull off the um, pads here, pull this off like normal, pull this off and put the new one on. And then when it goes back in, you'll actually just adjust it um, until it stops and you won't be able to move the rotor. And then I usually do a click back and the motor, the rotor should be able to rotate just a little bit and then your e-brake will be set. And you do that on both sides um, and then you'll see a big difference in your um, e-brake. So I'm gonna start on that now. All right, so I have the rotor off. You can see on the inside, this is what the um, drum looks like. And then when you come over here, it's a standard shoe setup. It's just inside the drum of the rotor. So um, this is the adjustment screw I was talking about. Depending on which direction you go, it either pulls it in or pushes, pushes it out. And so shoes look like they're in pretty good condition. This isn't really affiliated with the braking. This is just for the e-brake to hold the car. So um, we got the new line on. It's a little stubby short line. Doesn't have to travel far just to here. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna get the new rotor unboxed, put it on, start putting it back together. Okay, now you can see the brakes are done. So we have one, two, three, and four. Now the last thing we need to do is bleed the brake system, which we will start with the farthest corner away from the brake master cylinder. So that's normally um, a pretty good rule of thumb that if you're gonna be bleeding brakes, you start from the farthest most corner away from the brake cylinder and then work your way to the next farthest, next farthest, and then the closest. So I need to find somebody to help me break, ugh, bleed the brakes now, um, and then we'll be done. Then I'm gonna take it on a test drive. So I hope y'all are gonna be excited about that because this will be the first time that I've driven the car with the LS in it, and we might go beat the brakes off it. So it'll be fun.
brand new, so I gotta get the surfaces off them so they made. But everything feels good. Let's hear what you have to say. Um, anyway, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.